Father, we want to come into this house. Lord, we want to really just call upon your name to reveal yourself to us in such a real way. Lord, not as the world or even as religion would like to show you, but we want to find the Jesus of the Bible, the one who loved us so much that he endured all that pain and all that suffering that we might be free. And my God, today I ask you just to help me, anoint me, help me today, Father, to open up this treasure, this great book, this amazing truth that will help us to triumph in this life. And for that, we'll give you all the praise and all the glory. And everybody said, Amen. How many people know that Jesus wants you to rule and reign in life? <laughs> wants you to be successful. Wants you to be an overcomer. Uh, you know, he paid a tremendous price that we might be saved, that we might be free. So I want to just share this morning about reigning in life. To reign in this life. Romans 5.17 says this. It says, For if by one man's offense death reigned by the one, much more they. Everybody say much more. Okay, so the enemy came in with a plan. And his plan was a plan of destruction. And many times as we hear what the devil's doing and what the enemy's done on this planet, the wars, the rumors of wars, the mess, the, the murders, the, 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 just the atrocity of what's going on on this planet. Sometimes we just get so overwhelmed by that. But that was through one man's offense. But the Bible says much more. So whatever Jesus has done is much more than what the devil's done. That means that there is more going for us and against us. Whatever the enemy tries, there's much more. There's much more today that I can draw upon. There's much more today that I can receive. There's much more today that I can draw from God and overcome and, and destroy whatever the enemy is trying to do for, against me. So much more, they which receive abundance. Every, I, I believe that God's trying to say something here. I, I believe that... It, are you excited about this? Can I hear an amen? <laughs> is it all right to say an amen in this house? How about we wake the dead? That's us. <laughs> Much more they which receive abundance of grace, abundance, much more, and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Shall reign in life by the one. There's a man who came and he paid that awesome price. His name is Jesus. Righteousness, we will rule. We will rule because there's an abundance of grace, because there's a gift that God has given to me. Because of that abundance of righteousness, that's right standing with God. Now I can rule and reign with Him. Man's, one of man's greatest enemies is self-condemnation. I find it's not too hard to find people that will condemn themselves. But somehow or other it's not in our natural nature to be able to confess and speak about the abundance of grace, the abundance of of righteousness that God has poured out upon us and drink from that well. I believe that there's great truths in this passage that we've just read. And I, and I believe that just in that one scripture you could preach for weeks and weeks and weeks. But I just want to bring out one or two things here today. Number one, I want to bring out, it is possible for you and I to reign in this life. It is possible for you and I to rule and reign in this life. If you're not reigning in some areas, it doesn't mean you can't. I believe you can. It is possible to rule and reign in this life. If there's areas where the enemy has come in and he has deceived us and pulled us down and brought us into a place of depression, brought us into a place of insecurity, fear, whatever it might be. I want to say to you today, the good news, if by one man's offense that thing entered into your life, 
but much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness are going to rule and reign in this life. But I want to say this, it's time that we laid aside and pushed aside all the lies of the enemy and we started to embrace, started to, to somehow or other harness ourselves to what Jesus says about us and not about what the enemy says. Whatever comes against us, whatever comes to try to overcome us is not God's will for your life. Whatever comes against you, it is not God's will for your life. The Bible says we are to reign as kings in this life. You believe that today? The book of Revelations tells us in Revelations chapter 1, just going to read a couple of verses here, verse 5. It says, And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Kings and priests. There's a lot of teachings that go on about kings and priests. And a lot of people say, well, the kings are the financial people and the priests are the ministers. Well, I want to tell you that we're all kings and priests. Every one of us is meant to be a king and a priest today, to be whatever God wants you to be, to rule and reign with Him in righteousness in Jesus' name. Amen. It says we are to reign by the one Christ Jesus. Not of our own ability, not of our own strength, but there's one who wants to come and invade our life. He just doesn't want to invade our life, but He wants to come and live within us. He wants to rule and reign through us, and He wants to show us victory. We cannot reign as kings in our own power. We must be one with Christ. To be one with Christ, really, you can say, well, I love Jesus, but friend, you can love Jesus and still have wrong teaching in your life, still have wrong thinking in your life. You can be saying to, to yourself today, well, Jesus needs me to suffer for Him. Or I need to do this because of that. Friend, I want to tell you that we do not need to do anything. We just need to rule and reign in Him. We need to be able to accept what He has done for us and how He's done with that with us. We need to come into unity with the Word of God. We can become, if you've if you're got wrong thinking in your mind, it will take you away from the promises of God. But to come into unity, friends, is to come into agreement, even if you do not understand it, even if you do not, uh, aren't even capable of understanding it because of what you're going through. Somehow or other, you've got to reach out through the ashes and re reach out through the miry clay, reach out through the condemnation and the pressure of life or whatever it might be. You've got to reach out somehow or other and grab it. Lay hold of it. And even if your natural mind, there's a war goes on, and the natural mind is a great war going on, because number one, we don't deserve it. But I thank God because of the grace and the mercy and the compassion and the love of our God that He over He, he had just overshadowed all that and loved me instead of it. He loves us, friends. And his great desire is to see us ruling and reigning over the enemy's works. We're to rule as kings, not in our own power, but in his power. We've got to become one with him, and that's one with this word. It's one with whatever God says about me. If God says I can be more than a conqueror, well, that's what I am, amen. If I'm not feeling like a conqueror, I've got to reach out and I've got to grab it, and I've got to drink, bring it into myself, and I say, Neil, you are more than a conqueror. You can do this. You can do this. I don't know about you, but I know that God has asked me to do many things that I've never had the natural ability to do, but somehow or other we've done it together. Since we reign by the one, we only need uh, to be able to comprehend who He is and what He's done for us. Our relationship is to be with Him. Our relationship, we've got to come again and, and fall in love with Him. As Chris was saying, it's hard.
to look upon those photographs. It's hard, the pictures of, of the suffering. But somehow or other, friends, we've got to allow something like that to break the stony heart. We've got to allow something like that to get in to break that, that Aussie thing so as that we can weep before our God, so as that we can lift up holy hands with a love oozing out of us and, my God, I didn't deserve it, but I thank you for it. I thank you that you suffered for me. I thank you. Oh, friend, I watched him there as his one eye was shut and that eye looking up to heaven as he saw the dove, as he saw what I, I don't know, but what he was seeing, but I saw it as something inside of him there that says, hey, 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 it's okay. That dove, the Holy Spirit, was hovering over him, just waiting and watching. He paid an awesome price, an amazing price. We can reign, and our only concern is to be in our relationship with Him. He makes it possible for each one of us to reign. Cain came before his God, and he brought the first fruits of his own hands. He couldn't understand why God had to reject his offering. His offering would have been amazing. The fruit the vegetables, whatever it was that he, that he presented to God would have been of, 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 of first class. But it was the work of his own hands. He couldn't understand why God would, would reject it. But God wanted something more than that. When he saw his brother come with a little measly lamb that he really hadn't had much to do with other than just making sure that the mother was fed and looked after now the mother produces this little child and, 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 and he comes with this little, little, weaselly little old lamb and lifts it up to God and God accepts it. And that's what we're like, friends. We haven't got much to offer. All I had to offer him was brokenness and strife. But he makes something beautiful out of our lives. Amen. We might not have much in the, in the natural, but if we can come through Jesus... And if we can somehow or other lift up that name which is above every name, and somehow or other just cry out to our God that He can impact us and empower us and endure us with that anointing that something will break forth, amen, that will see our nation change. I, I honestly believe as we sing that song, the atmosphere is changing. And the only reason an atmosphere will change is when people acknowledge that they need Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. I can't come in my own strength and my own power, but I come in His power. We reign in life because we have received an abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. We do not understand grace and righteousness, and we, sorry, if we do not understand grace and righteousness, or we'll just live under condemnation all of our lives. I want you to have a look with me in the book of Romans, chapter 8. The Bible says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh or their own ability, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of Him and condemned sin in the flesh. I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. I stand here today by the grace and the mercy of God. There's no other attributes, there's no other way, but I stand here washed in the blood. Hallelujah. I stand here cleansed. If we don't understand the grace of God that could save a wretch like you and me, if we don't understand the mercy of God, if we don't understand righteousness, we will live under condemnation all of our lives. To live as kings, we must understand that we have received salvation through this abundance of grace and of God and not through our own works. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, it says, For by grace you are saved through faith, and that is not of yourselves. 
It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Friend, I believe that God is speaking loud and clear to His church. And you might think today that in your study or in your prayer or in your devotion to God, as God starts to speak to you about things and as He starts to draw upon you, just in the last few months in my own life, and I couldn't really work and understand what was going on because I've never been sick really, but all of a sudden I got shingles. But in the, in the midst of all that and in the midst of, 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 of just searching and working and finding God, there's something there that started to show itself loud and clear, and that was the weakness of my stinking flesh. Just things that, that happened and areas where I failed and things that, that happened that should never have happened to a, a pastor, a man of God, anger, bitterness, different things that just started to rise up. But I believe that what God was showing me is the weakness of my flesh and that I had to deal with things in my flesh. And there's only one way to deal with your flesh, and that's go into the realm of the Spirit. Because it's not by might and it's not by power, but it's by my Spirit. And if you're going through a time where, where God is revealing your flesh problems to you, rejoice, but do something about it. Amen? Because I believe that we are to reign as kings over our bodies over our carnal minds, over our circumstances, over demonic powers, and over every sickness and disease in Jesus' name. Many Christians live as slaves, not as kings. I believe that's the thing that we've got to face and smash and destroy. Amen? I am no longer a slave to sin. I am a child of God. Can I hear an amen? Come on, lift up your hand and say amen. I am no longer a slave to sin. I am a child of God. To reign in life, there are things that we should know. One of the great things I believe that we should know is that Satan is defeated. Turn to somebody today and say, Satan is defeated. Not will be, but is. Satan is defeated. The Bible says in 1 John 3, 8, it says, For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that He might destroy the works of Satan, amen, or the works of the devil. Hebrews, have a look with me in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews, what an amazing book. Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 2. Inasmuch then, in verse 14, as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For indeed, he does not give aid to angel, but he does give aid to the seed of Abraham. To release those who through fear of death, that through death he might destroy him. Reflecting again of those photographs we saw, that little clip, Jesus as he was suffering, as he was 
as his blood was gushing out of his body, as the pain gripped him, as, 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 as the just people spitting at him and the ones that he came to save and, and redeem were, were rejecting him. Rejection is a horrible thing. But he's, he's, he's re been rejected and despised. And it comes to a point where they nail him there and they, they eventually pierce his side and they pronounce him dead. They pull him down from that grave, from that cross rather. We see in the natural, but in the realm of the spirit, the Bible tells us that, that Jesus went to Hades. For three days and for three nights, I don't know what would have gone on. All I could imagine was the fury and the wrath and the, and the power of the enemy would have been lashed out against him as, as they thought that this man who was going to redeem through one man's righteous act that all the works of Satan was going to be destroyed, but now he stopped this move of God. He stopped the plan of God and now, now it's his. Jesus lay there. I don't know how. I can only in my own imagination imagine it. But all of a sudden, when the, when the price was fully paid, oh, friend, when the price was fully paid, life came back into the body of Jesus Christ. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead wants to raise us up. We've heard the word, rise up, you mighty people. Rise up, you people. Rise up above the circumstances and situations of life. And here he is right in the pit of haze as he begins to surge and he begins to rise. And the devil, I, man, I've got an imagination. But David, I see him going up there and taking the devil by the throat. I'm oh, sorry, I put a bit too much pressure on you there. <laughs> I just saw that. I <laughs> Took him by the throat until, he, until his eyeballs were popping out of his head. And he said, I'll take the keys of hell and of death. I can't say the words that I'd like to say. Slapped him around the head a few times perhaps. But there as he gripped that grip and friend, and he looked to, to heaven and he said, thank you, my father. I'm doing it for my people. And I want to tell you, friends, you might think, oh, well, this bloke's a bit crazy or whatever it is. But I want to tell you the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross. But I want to tell you the great joy that Jesus is going to have is when he sees his people rising up. Rise up, you people of power. Rise up, you people of power, because your enemy has been defeated. Your enemy has been destroyed. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he might destroy the works of Satan. And he rose again. Hallelujah. He rose again. Hallelujah. He rose again. Glory to God. He rose again. Check up one day. Hallelujah. He rose again. Glory to God. He rose Rose again. Oh, I wish I would have saw that. I would have got on that one. He, he rose again. Turn to somebody and say, He rose again. Oh, this little chariot's going to get on fire. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> he rose again. Ooh. Rose again. You gotta know that your enemy has been defeated. Satan is defeated. The Spirit of God is in us now to empower us to bring about and enforce this victory. Mark 16 and 17 talks about in my name, you will cast out devil. In my name, in my name. When we totally believe Satan's been defeated, that we've been endured with power from on high, and the given the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, this truth will set you free. How many people want to be free? Well, it's the truth that makes you free. 
not a lie. It's the truth that makes you free. And then you'll set other people free. People that have been held captive to a lie. Do you know that there's so many people out there that are held captive to a lie? We're not here playing church. We're not here just to tip throw toes through the tulips with Tiny Tim. We're not just here so that we can have a little worship time and get a few doodads or a few goosebumps. We're here to go out and save the world. You say, well, that's Jesus. No, he said, you go. Lazarus, when he came out, he said, you set him free. You set him free. I've done everything. I've, I've redeemed him from the death. Now you set him free. The world has been redeemed from their sin, but you go out and you enforce the victory. People have been held captive to a lie. Satan's defeated. I believe we had to demonstrate Satan's defeat in our life. Another thing, if you're going to rule and reign in life, guard your mouth. Turn to somebody and say, guard your mouth. Malachi 3.6, it says, I am the Lord, I do not change. Hebrews 13 verse 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Romans 10, 8 and 10 says, confession is made unto salvation. Confession, confession, confession. Revelation 12 verse 11 says, they overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. They overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb. Yes, we overcame him, but also by the word of your testimony. I am redeemed, hallelujah. I am more than a conqueror. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. I'm not a slave to sin, glory to God. I've been redeemed. I am no longer a slave to sickness and disease. Amen. I'm not going back to shingle in again. <laughs> this is a good thing you see I don't even have to go in there and, 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 and destroy the enemy he's already destroyed all I got to do is confess what Jesus says it's the easiest fight you'll ever fight you don't even have to get any blood on you you've already been washed in it <laughs> You don't have to get a scrap. You don't have to, have to get a, a scratch. You just got to say, Jesus said. Jesus said, hallelujah. In his name, we can cast out demons. And by the blood and the name of Jesus, demon powers, you are broken. You got to rule and reign. You got to guard your mouth. Be careful what you say. The Word of God shall not be void of power. This is the most powerful book in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah from cover to cover. Even the maps, I believe the maps. <laughs> Even the maps are anointed. Hallelujah. Oh, they're lovely. Can't pronounce half of them. <laughs> this is the most powerful book, David. Look at it. Oh, Shakabundi. <laughs> it's an amazing book. It carries life. Amen. You'd be amazed what's in this book. Somebody says, We win. I've read it in the last book. I want to tell you, we win on every page. No good word shall be void of power. He watches over. Can you believe? He watches over this book to perform it. And if you, you know, you're thinking you're going to say, Oh, Jesus, by your stripes I'm healed. He's going to look down and say, You idiot. I said that to Sarah the other day. 
What's your name? On your phone. Siri, Siri. I said, you idiot. And I looked up, and here it was. Oh, you idiot. She, she typed it out on me. She said, I'm still here for you, sir. <laughs> I said, man, your grace is sufficient. That, 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 my phone's got more grace than I have sometimes. <laughs> What was I talking about? <laughs> no, no, you, no, right, you get this, you get out there and you say, by, by your stripes I'm healed. And he's not going to call you an idiot. He's not going to say, how stupid could you believe that? He's going to say, hey, he watches over the word to perform it. Amen. If you say, I am more than a conqueror, you may not be a conqueror at the time, but you're coming into agreements with the word of God. I am more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. He's not going to say, hey, you're not a conqueror. No, he's going to, he, he's watching over it to perform it. Hallelujah. He watches, is, is God a liar? God is not a liar. Amen. He's watching over it. You can get hold of this word. Ooh. Hey, it's good. Is this good? Is this true? Watch your mouth. Ah, oh, no, good. Yes, who? Guess who's watching over that word to perform it? Hairy legs. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Speak it out. Speak it out. That's why you've got to be careful. If I, if I told you how I felt, sometimes you'd be disgusted. I feel like killing him. <laughs> dare. Everybody say dare. To speak God's promises. Say them to yourself. Say them to the devil. Get him thinking of it. Make sure you've had a big bit of garlic before you. Bring it. Say it to your sickness. Say it to the mountain of trouble. Shout it out. I am redeemed. Hallelujah. I am saved. I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm free. Shout it out. Confession is made unto salvation. Salvation means not only salvation of your soul, but wholeness, healing, deliverance, etc. Our freedom is in our mouth, in our confession. Don't confess sickness and disease. Confess what the Word says. Hallelujah. Though I want to hear people say the Word of God says. Shout it out. Speak it to yourself. Get yourself in the mirror. Look at yourself. Make sure you've done your hair and everything. Put on. I am healed, hallelujah. <laughs> Speak it to yourself. Speak it to yourself. Because self-condemnation is one of the great, great things that will smash you. I am redeemed. Hallelujah. I'm not, I was looking at Roy when I said that. <laughs> Look at me. I am redeemed, hallelujah. See the devil grab, Jesus grabbed the devil by the neck of the ear till his eyeballs start popping out like a crab. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus got a hold of my life and I won't, and he won't let me go. Where's the musicians? Come on up here, you musos. You might be feeling the tug on your heart. Yeah, you've loved Jesus all your life. But there's something 
about going to another place another level that's a gentle thing while we're singing this today we don't normally do this but I'm going to invite the church while we're singing it just come out and bow your knee if you sense God touching you and you just want to yield surrender I don't know. But as God tugs on the strings of your heart, let Him tug you. Let Him bring you. I'm going to kneel before my God today. I'm going to kneel before my God today. Amazing grace.